नमस्कार आई एम रूडर काफले फ्रॉम उस्टर मैसेच्यूसेट्स सो टुडे वी आर डूइंग अ ब्रांड न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ फिजिक्स इज फॉन व्हिच इज फिफ्टींथ एपिसोड इन द सीरीज इफ यू मिस द प्रीवियस एपिसोड्स ऑफ फिजिक्स इज फॉन सो आई हैव अपलोडेड देम इन यूट्यूब इन माई यूट्यूब चैनल यू कैन वॉच इन देयर और दे आर ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इन फेसबुक okay uh, so today we will be uh, extending the idea of newton's laws of motion applications of newton's laws of motion in new area new realm that is rotation okay so this is a kind of difficult concept rotational uh, mechanics or rotational dynamics or simply rotational kinematics is another broad area of physics where we apply newton's laws of motion okay so what is that so let let me introduce a very simple way okay so when we consider rotational dynamics right of course there is force okay of course there is force but we are kind of stress that to a different quantity we define a new quantity called torque or moment of force so what is that so let me do a small demonstration to you okay so here so i have this wooden bar right that i have this wooden bar and this is i have uh, i am putting that on top of this table right you can see here right so this is balance it is horizontal okay this is horizontal it is balanced you see that right the reason is uh, this is uh, this is uh, sitting on top of the table right so that the weight on this side and the weight on this sides are equal right and so this uh, weight and that weight uh, because of uh, like acting vertically downward right so on this hinge they are equal and so they uh, balance this uh, balance this uh, uh, wooden bar right now let's let me apply some force on this side i am pushing it down now you see this is lifting up like this right so what happened here i applied force on this side right on top of the weight of this section of this wooden bar right on on top of the weight of this section of the wooden bar i applied additional force right so the force which i apply here right is now adding to the weight on this side so there is more force on this side okay so that is causing a kind of rotation of this uh, wooden bar right see now the wooden bar is a kind of rotating right so it is going up right so the same way if i apply a force on this side so it will rotate this way okay now let's let me try to define a quantity called the moment of force or torque okay what is that so this wooden bar is supported on the top of the table okay right so if you consider this 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 point to be origin and let's say this is about half of this wooden bar on this side other half is on this side so the since the bar is uniform the weight acts somewhere around here right so the weight is vertically downward right which is mass of this section times acceleration due to gravity right so this is the hinge or the point of support right so if you measure the distance from here to there and multiply by the weight right that is what is called torque so the amount of force times the perpendicular distance the amount of force the force is vertically downward the distance is horizontal so naturally they are at 90 degrees right right so because of that because of that so we can simply multiply this distance by the amount of force that is the weight of this section so that quantity is called torque t o r q u e torque or moment of force on the other hand if you consider on this side on this side so the exactly the same way right the distance from this point to the about the center of this section of the wooden bar right you can multiply the weight of this section of the wooden bar by this distance perpendicular distance then you will get torque right so torque on this side rotates this right in one direction torque on this side rotates in other direction right so what you understand from this is uh, there is a new physics 
here the physics of rotation okay the physics of rotation now let me show you a simple application of rotation okay so i have a here i have here fidget spinner right so what i can do is i can hold it and then apply force now you can see right now it is spinning right it is spinning so this is a new kind of motion then simple translationary translation uh, translatory motion right so this is rotation right so in rotation there are some new quantities we need to define called angular displacement that means what angle does this fidget spinner cover like in certain time just like linear displacement what angle for example if it goes one complete rotation every one of us knows that i believe is 360 degrees right or 2 pi radians in general we apply when we use the formulas and equations in rotational dynamics we take the angles in radians okay so so uh, what angle is covered by what angle does it move through any at any point if you consider any point of the fidget spinner so what angle does it move through in a given time that is called angular displacement okay and then how fast it moves is the angular velocity okay how fast does it move is the angular velocity okay and at what rate the velocity angular velocity changes is the angular acceleration by the way we can write rotational uh, velocity and rotational acceleration also we can say that too right so angular velocity how fast it is moving right and at what rate the velocity is changing that is rotational or angular acceleration for example see right now it is at rest right now it is at rest right it is at rest now when i apply some force on on one side and then right uh, and then cause it to move that it starts from zero and get some velocity right that means its angular velocity is changing with time then what we call angular acceleration or rotational acceleration so when there is acceleration there must be right when there is net acceleration there must be force but here we need to be careful because this object is not moving linearly this object is moving right in a in a in a in a circle right right it is rotating <clears throat> so then we need to consider not only force but the effect of force so that is torque so what is happening here see i push it down i apply force from this distance where i am holding right so i am applying force so there is a this distance right perpendicular distance so the force times perpendicular distance is torque so when i apply torque right when i apply torque so what happens it now it starts accelerating the torque causes acceleration right if there is net torque that causes a net acceleration that gives a net acceleration just like in newton's uh, second law of motion in linear dynamics right what we said f equal to ma if there is net force right if there is net force then what will happen it will give a net acceleration which is f equal to ma right right and that acceleration causes the change in velocity just like that here if, when i apply a net force on it right so the, it generates a torque which is r the distance times the amount of force what i apply right and that causes this fidget spinner to rotate right right you can see in similar example in the fan in the fan there is motor it is a complex system there right the motor in the motor right when we turn on electricity there is now electro electromagnetic force right that causes uh, the motor to rotate and then fan rotates right so there is a net force so the fan starts from rest when there is a net force in there there is a net torque in there right that net torque causes the rotation okay right so uh, now uh, let me show you one uh, uh, quick uh, let me a little bit continue more so now there is a new quantity here just like f equal to ma when we call f equal to ma right force is equal to mass times acceleration here we consider some some quantity called 
rotational inertia or moment of inertia. What is that? So what is that? If I consider a small object like this, like, like this, right, it has certain mass. And then from the point of rotation, this is the, there is a distance, right? So the distance and mass. If you square the distance and multiply by the mass, then that gives a quantity called rotational inertia. Okay? I'll show you a mathematics, the mathematics in a few minutes, right? So there is what is called rotational inertia or moment of inertia that is given by for point object, for a small object rotating about certain axis, right? This can be calculated by mass times square of the distance from the axis of rotation, right? So that is called moment of inertia or rotational inertia that quantity plays a kind of similar kind of role as the mass does in linear dynamics. Okay? So, a, a rotating quantity has a quantity which is uh, undergoing rotational motion has mass. Right? So, it has, uh, therefore, it has rotational inertia. Right? And then, it, since it is moving, it is rotating, it has angular velocity. Right? It is, since it is rotating about the axis, it has angular velocity. So, if you take, take the product of those, those two quantities, what, is, what are those two quantities? Rotational iner inertia and angular velocity, then you get a quantity called angular momentum. Okay? If you multiply rotational inertia okay, by angular velocity, so you get the product of I angular uh, rotational inertia that is denoted by i right times omega which is angular velocity i will show you the mathematics in a few minutes so the product of moment of inertia and angular velocity is called angular momentum so very interestingly what happens is that angular momentum remains constant if the net external torque on an object is zero okay that the net external torque uh, uh, there is no net external torque. Okay? In the absence of net external torque, the total angular momentum of the system remains conserved, constant. Just like what we call, uh, what I think I mentioned the uh, linear uh, conservation of linear momentum. In the absence of net external force, in the absence of net external force, the total momentum of a system remains cons constant. Right, that is the conservation of linear momentum. So just like that, right, in a rotational dynamics, in the absence of net external torque, the angular momentum of the system remains constant or conserved. So I would like to so, do a very interest, interesting demonstration to you. Okay, please give me a second. Okay. Okay. So. So I have here a swivel chair, okay? So you see, here is a swivel chair, right? Or a revolving chair, okay? You see that, right? So I am stand, uh, I am sitting on the chair, right? So let me hold two identical objects in my hand, okay? These are two identical objects. You can hold any kind of objects, right? So what I do is, I give some uh, angular velocity to myself, okay? So I give some angular velocity to myself and it starts, I start rotating, okay? So please watch, please watch, right? So I am rotating now, right? So I am giving, I am speeding faster and faster, right? So see, you see? Now what I do is, when I stretch my hand like this, so I stop right away. And then I, if I bring closer, then I again start moving faster, right? 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 So, this is an example of, this is an example of uh, uh, angular momentum conservation. Okay? This is an example of angular momentum uh, conservation, the principle of angular momentum conservation. And one very interesting example for that is the ballet dancer. Okay? I posted one question yesterday, right? How do the ballet dancer spin faster, right, and they, uh, when, uh, suppose they are 
rotating or the moving faster how do they all of a sudden slow down okay so in that interesting example that very uh, that is uh, that there is application of physics that is the principle of conservation of angular momentum okay okay so these are some interesting examples right just like uh, the uh, what i uh, showed you now right so on the swivel chair or the revolving chair i was sitting there right so what i did when i brought my uh, the uh, books in my hand right when i brought these books in my hand uh, closer i started <coughs> spinning faster when when i stretched this way right so i started uh, spinning slower what happens there when my hands were like that with the book right so all the masses were closer to my body axis right because i was spinning about my body axis right so when i stretch my hands the mass distribution goes farther from my body axis as a result of that the rotational inertia becomes higher right but the product of rotational inertia and the angular velocity should remain constant what is that that is the angular momentum conservation okay so let me show you the mathematics okay and then i will explain more okay so uh, here uh, you probably you can see i what i have written here is newton's laws in rotation okay so that is newton's laws in rotation okay so there is a qu very important quantity i mentioned in rotation is torque right so what is torque the the quantity torque usually denoted by greek letter tau is equal to r cross f by the way this is not an ordinary product it is vector product some uh, it is a kind of difficult to calculate but if the r r vector that is the distance vector or the position vector and force are perpendicular to each other then you can simply write magnitude of r times magnitude of force you can multiply simply okay so that is what call, we call torque so torque is the product of the distance from the axis of rotation perpendicular distance times the magnitude of the force okay or more uh, rigorously vector we, are, we can give by vector equation r cross f vector r cross vector f okay let's consider a very simple example let's consider the door knob okay in our door in our door right there is door knob or door handle right the door handle is uh, on the side of the door rather than closer to the hinges why if we uh, make a uh, door knobs close to the hinges what happens that r is very very small almost zero right so you need to apply a humongous amount of force to open the door or to close the door so but when the uh, the since the door knobs or handles are towards the edge of the door so by applying a small amount of force you can rotate the door easily right why because r is large so even if f is small the rotational effect is large so the torque is large or what you or also we call moment of force is large rotational effect is large so it is easy to rotate right okay now let's go beyond so in uh, we can write this equation for newton second law right using the torque right so instead of force i write torque instead of mass i write moment of inertia instead of acceleration i write rotational acceleration okay okay so if we now let me define what those quantities are so the quantity i is rotational inertia or moment of inertia and is given by the product of mass of the object times square of the distance in general for small objects this formula holds true otherwise we need to actually calculate the rotational inertia by some mathematical process okay so alpha the quantity alpha in this equation in this equation here is rotational acceleration so you see 
this equation is similar to f equal to ma. So, this is nothing but Newton's second law of motion in rotation. Instead of force, you write torque. Instead of mass, you write moment of inertia or rotational inertia. Instead of linear acceleration, you write rotational acceleration, right? So, as I mentioned, the angular momentum, this is the quantity which is calculated by the product of moment of inertia times angular velocity. When an object is rotating, when an object with some mass is rotating, it has rotational inertia, right? And it has angular velocity. So, if you take the product of those two quantities, what you call is the, what you get is the angular momentum, okay? Again, that quantity I is the rotational inertia or moment of inertia, okay? Moment of inertia, right? And try to figure out the unit of this quantity. Mass is in kilogram, distance is in meters. So, you can uh, easily figure out what is the unit of this moment of inertia, uh, uh, moment of inertia or rotational inertia, right? Although this quantity behaves like a mass in rotational motion, it is not exactly mass. It is the product of mass times and the square of the distance, okay, from the rotation axis. And the omega, that letter omega, Greek letter omega, is the angular velocity, okay? So, uh, angular momentum conservation. So, if the net external torque is zero, right, so what you can write is I1, that is initial rotational inertia times initial angular velocity is equal to final rotational inertia times final angular velocity. So, but there is, there should be no net torque uh, 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 acting on the system, right? So, this is what is called angular momentum conservation, okay? So, now let's apply this to ballet dancer. This is a, a picture I took from Wikipedia. So, it is a picture of very, very famous ballet dancer. So, what is she doing? She is bringing her hands closer and her feet closer, right? So, in this situation, she spins faster. Why? Because when she brings her hands closer to her body and feet closer to, together, then what happens? The mass, body mass comes closer to the rotational axis, body axis. So, that means moment of inertia or that quantity I, right, that will be smaller. So, as a result of that, angular velocity should be larger. So, it spins faster. How does, how can she slow down? So, when she stretches her hand, what happens? Hands are, and in that case, the mass distribution is now at wider distance, right? So, as a result of that, uh, rotational inertia becomes higher, right? So, the angular velocity, because of angular momentum conservation, angular velocity should be less, right? So, spin slower. That's what I exactly, that's what I exactly did in swivel chair. I can do, show that demonstration to you one more time. But before that, let me tell you a couple of, couple of things. For example, this idea is extremely important in physics, right? I just introduced you this new realm of physics today. So, if you are curious, please try to find the literature and learn more, right? So, for example, Johannes Kepler gave the Kepler's law of planetary motion. There are three laws of planetary motion, just like Newton's three laws of motion, right? The planets go around the sun, right? So, they go in elliptical orbit. They go in elliptical orbit, not exactly in circle, right? And their angular momentum remains conserved there because the net external torque is not, uh, the, the net external torque is zero, right? So, the angular momentum is conserved. So, when the planets are closer to the sun, they move faster. And when the planets are away from the sun, they move slower. So, they, all, they don't always move with the same, uh, same velocity, right? Same angular velocity or even linear velocity, right? So, that is the result of, that is the result uh, that we can explain by angular momentum conservation principle, okay? So, there are so many other, uh, other applications of uh, this 
stretch of Newton's second law of motion in rotational dynamics. So before I close this session, I would like to do the demonstration one more time. So that will probably help you understand better. Okay. So let me do here. So what I am doing is I am bringing my hand closer. Right. So let me do. Uh, let me rotate. Right. So. So when I stretch my hand, see, I'm almost at rest. Right. So I almost come to rest. Right. So when I bring my hands closer, what happens? When I am spinning, when I am spinning, when I bring my hands closer, right, the quantity I, the moment of inertia or the rotational inertia becomes less. Because my, my whole mass is closer to my body axis about which I am rotating, right? So when I becomes less, according to conservation of angular momentum, right, what should happen? When I becomes less, omega should be high. So I should spin faster, right? And then when I stretch my hands, right, the mass distribution is now at a bigger distance, right? So as a result of that, rotational inertia becomes higher, right? Because I is equal to mass times R squared, the distance from my body axis. How far is the mass distribution? Okay? So, so if, you take, um, uh, if you take more masses, like this will be more interesting. Right? You can do this experiment uh, in front of your students in your classroom. Okay? Or if you are students, you can try. Okay? So let me do one more time. Right? Right? So see? So that, that's, uh, that is the principle of angular momentum conservation. So with that, I would like to thank you so much for uh, coming to this session, right? So please uh, provide your feedback in comment, right? If you have any question, you can comment in there or you can uh, send those uh, questions in my inbox. I'm getting actually some good questions from some of you, right? So I enjoy answering those questions, right? I will give you, I will provide you materials if you need help, okay? With that, I would like to thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.